Warning. Viewer discretion is advised. This channel and its content are not intended for anyone under 13 years of age. If you are under 13, please turn off this video. The following may contain material not suited for viewers under 13, such as coarse and suggestive language, tobacco, drug, and or alcohol references, simulated slash fantasy violence, and adult situations. Additionally, this channel and its contents are not intended to be a replacement for proper parenting. Don't allow viewing habits to interfere with personal responsibilities and relationships. Constructive criticism is encouraged, making for better content. Jokes are jokes, albeit immature ones. Please watch responsibly. Thank you. It's personal. It's stupendous. It's conspicuously incredible. Hurry, hurry, step right up. Hey, Sonny, you want to give it a try? Hello everyone, and welcome back to another edition of Conspicuously Incredible Gaming. I am your host, Mike. So now I'm going to start on number 9 of Summon Night. While I've still got the time, and I'm still sitting here waiting for... Waiting for these people to figure out what the hell they want to do with this bullcrap that I'm sitting on. I'm recording this same day as the last one. So... They'll probably be trying to message me in the middle of this, too, more than likely. I didn't think maybe the last one, but this one probably. Anyway, let's screw it. Let me go ahead and get right on into it. Alright, let me turn the volume back on on the game. I see my microphone is moving, so I didn't screw up on that, so you guys can hear me. And Alright. So... I shouldn't go more than 8.56 because I've been focused off the window. Okay, no, never mind. It went way the hell up there. Oh, well. I'm not trying to beat this in any kind of a time trial or anything. Turn that down in my ear again, so... So I made that weapon. So now I'm probably going to have to... I think now... Since I got the weapon... I'm hoping it's going to let me go ahead and do the, uh... Do the battle. And because... They're only going to let me have one. Maybe let's begin. Yep, alright. So came up to everything I said to discourage you from coming. No, I'm gonna whoop your ass. Didn't find you before the match, thought you dropped out of the tournament. No, we were fishing for stuff so we can whoop your ass with. That's what we were doing. We were preparing. So that I wouldn't bow out. Yep. It's a good weapon, but they don't want to affect us at all. Okay. Okay. Yeah, let's get on. Let's get it on. <laughs> Celebrity deathmatch. Let's get it on! <laughs> Let's 
see where you got really any elemental to have to deal with. Alright, now you're fucked up. Celebrated too early. Shit. Oh, you twat. Oh, too slow. That's it. corner here. Ah, she got me. That was close, though. myself and not necessarily I don't know it depends if I can get in on it real good I can maybe use that a couple times and where she can get ready to heal Just go straight on the offense for that frickin' ass whooping. Yeah, I didn't even let you get that far. Fuck strategy. <laughs> Just could go in there, guns blazing.
So like, we're all girls, let's just be friends. Yeah, but, you know, as I said before, girls are kind of, you know. Oh, sorry, one woman has another problem with another woman, and that grudge lasts for years. And her and all of her other girlfriends and everything, especially school, I mean, this is, you know, especially school, will ostracize that girl, pick and make fun of, and just totally, utterly, emotionally ruin a person. Men, they got a problem with you. They'll square off, beat your ass, and then they'll take you to the bar or whatever that night and have a couple beers with you. I've seen it happen. You know, maybe not in school, school, but probably college, but, you know, I've seen that happen in adult life. Somebody do something, say something, somebody got a problem with somebody. They take them out back, they beat the shit out of each other, and then that next night they're out there partying. Like ain't nothing ever happened. You hash your differences out, and then you move on. Probably should be making more weapons too, though. I'll go for a walk and let's. You can see, I keep going back to her, so. Needs a match. Why? because of their looks, but what, they trashed the place? And nasty answers, they don't really have any friends. Oh yeah. It's all must be friends, right? They're only sure they'd immediately refuse, but they really aren't all that bad. It's not expected for the guys from the guild so they start following those twins around. Popular. <laughs> well, everybody likes twins. Set me up. He knows the push that's, that shit bothers me a little bit, but. Semi finals, fourth round. So we're in the semi finals. Oh shit. Master Soccer was just here a couple of minutes ago. No, you met him on the way out. He wasn't just here a couple of minutes ago. He was here. <laughs> oh, really? Is he listening? But he looks happy. Maybe he already knows. Uh, let's speak up. What are you waiting for? I believe it. it's great to try your best. You ought to take a break sometimes. Well... because I don't want to have to whip up on their asses again. Weapons. See, that's the only thing is, I think 
Yeah, dude's got a lot of different, uh... Techniques to give everybody, but I think dude pretty much likes swords, too. That's about all he's given me as far as... You know, handing me directly without having to go to him and... And ask for stuff. Alright, well... That looks like I'm missing. 1, 3, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. 1, 3. So, okay, so yeah, I'm. Missing a few out of here. Alright, so what was the point in going through all the shit for this, when this is about half as powerful? Or, you know, 0.5, you know, 50% powerful than this one. Alrighty. It's your dad's sword though, right? Like me, <laughs> all this hotness, <laughs> right? <laughs> Y'all know I'm talking out my ass. <laughs> knows him too. but That's the best of anything right now. I was completely taken. <laughs> He's a good schemer. 
I'm just pegging because he wants to talk alone with him. <laughs> Don Braun. <laughs> Watch the door be locked. I'll say that. Door is locked. All you hear is e e e. You're an asshole. Yes, I am. Can't go there. Is this now? I can go up here? Uh-huh. Ding dong. Do think people ever bother? Well, I tried, but the damn door was locked. He knew your father. You'll have four kids. <laughs> fathers say that about their kids, so... Most of them rarely turn out better, but... So I knew there was another key somewhere. I had to had to deal with that. Now let me see what you got. I just got one of them flowers, like from upstairs. To him. I've been talking to Goofy Aquarium Girl. <laughs> That's why. And what the hell is... That must be they mapped that on the same... It's gotta be. They mapped that in the same area.
Apparently he ain't there. As someone who's obviously in love with her, he's damn sure making himself hard to find. There's a truck starting up again. It's gonna be a different way. I'll bet I didn't even... Beast, I mean, yeah, Beast here, Stray Summon, I meant. still use all five of those spots. And there. This is the other door here that's locked. this girly again. There's this story about your father. Oh, so she all of a sudden knew, even though dude's way up there and you're way down here. Father's mistress. something like that. 
<laughs> That's vague as shit. I mean, we all kind of guessed that from everybody knowing him, and though he was a great man, and... Good luck. Yoink. down to the, uh-huh. It's the back-ass entry in the, probably, what, the 19th floor? I whooped his ass. There's the reefer. Starter, next floor. Ooh, 
this a big room? Why'd I do that? It's not there. down here I didn't even go to, so... That's not what I wanted to use. I guess it works. I am making enough money off of this to be able to up on swords and shit.
that this damn truck's having a hard enough time keeping the battery up. It needs to just go ahead and start up. Damn it, we missed those two. Yeah, without the frickin' auxiliary power unit, the generator running on this thing. I don't keep up a constant steady supply, but the damn thing, the damn thing broke on me. And I'm not sure if I want to bother getting it fixed until after I come back from home time. stuck for another two or three days till they figure that out. I mean, I know what's wrong with it. I've already been monkeying around in it, but the other, the other day, cause I, you know, from the, what I was getting at first, it was something about low oil pressure. I'm like, okay, well then it needs a little bit of oil. And I'm checking the dipstick and all that stuff in it, and it's got plenty of oil. And kind of got a little too much oil if you think about it. What I saw. So I'm like, well, it can't be that. There's something else going on. But it was also something that said some breaker or some. something was tripped. And I'm looking around in the, uh, all the, the help on YouTube and looking in the manual and everything, and I'm really not seeing much anything for anything, but they said to check this one area in it. I'm looking around in there because apparently there's like a like a breaker or a, a switch and if something sometimes something gets overloaded and you gotta reach in there and like reset it and it, it fixes it and I couldn't find no switch or nothing and I started looking around in the thing and I'm like oh wait a minute there should be a belt here and I looked and the belt was pretty much like the belt wasn't completely broken, but it was barely hanging by a thread, but apparently it done wobbled, popped off, ripped the damn alternator almost completely out of its, you know, where it was being screwed in at, where it was being held up in. Well, that, you know. The thing is, it needs the alternator to generate power to keep the batteries up and to keep whatever in this truck running. I'm thinking what the alternator... Well, I mean... Well, it also... Yeah. Uh, 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 a power inverter that hooks right directly to the battery that they put on with this truck. And I think it's only a 2,000 water, maybe a 2,200 water. I don't even think it's 2,000 water. It may be close, 1,500, 2,000. But when they put the APU in, this also has a couple of wall sockets directly linked to the APU, to the generator. And from what I'm gathering, it says something like 6,000 watts, five or 6,000 watts. But it's got a direct power supply to, to under the right, right directly under the bunk. So I can't, you know, I can't use them outlets either. I can use the ones, you know, that was already in this thing, but... What's going on out here? That's more doors opening and shit. Apparently all that honking going on, the one guy come around the corner... I didn't, I, because I couldn't see him from that angle. He should have had... Um, he should have had his four ways, his hazards on when he was going to back up into that garage. And, and, you know, maybe he did. He had to, I guess he had to get a, a tire fixed on his trailer. And maybe he did. With the amount of traffic coming in and out of here and the way some of these fucking drivers act, as soon as the dude slowed up where he can then back ass into that garage where they can get his tire... The driver around him said, fuck it, 
and tried to go around him. And because dude had to bend his truck and everything and swing his truck out in order to get his trailer that way, I guess dude almost fucking, you know, sideswiped the other that was trying to get around him like an asshole instead of waiting. Some honking ensued. Like, if you're in a parking lot like this and you start putting your four ways on, you start moving real slow, slow down and pay attention to what exactly the person is doing. Don't try to take the, the next and quickest opportunity to try to whip by the person. Listen, man, a lot of these... A lot of these fucking drivers that sell their grandmama for a fucking quarter. They'd run over their own grandmama, you know, get an extra fucking couple of cents, a couple extra miles at, you know, 30, 40 fucking cents a mile. But calm down, it ain't that fucking critical. But I've noticed it's a lot of these people, too, that, that do this shit, are governed so far down, they can't even do, or can barely do 65 down the road. And their companies barely pay them anything, and they put them through a bunch of shit. And These are the guys that like to run people over. They're gonna try to, they're gonna try to go 65 or 63 or whatever in a construction zone. To try to make up for that time that you know they can't go faster than that when the road's 70. Or them day cab, you know, location to location drivers. You know, just going backwards and forwards from, like, say, you know, like, like Walmart. Walmart isn't too bad, but they still do sometimes. We're talking like FedEx and UP, especially FedEx, fucking uh, Old Dominion. Any of these fuckers that drive day cab. I guess they're under so much damn pressure to be there on the minute that any little snag or hiccup they get totally fucking pissed over. I, I mean, it can't be that if you go fast enough you get the opportunity to run another load. Because you're talking hours and hours, so ain't nobody gonna, you know, try to save three, four, five minutes to a half an hour to an hour to try to run another load that's going to you know, take you four or five hours to run. I think a lot of what it is is that, well, between that and the shitty pay, probably, and probably the stress they're under at the terminals through the companies, it could be that, well, once you run your load or two for the day, like you get to go home, you're not on an hourly you're on a, you know, flat rate per load. So the quicker you get that shit to the terminal, the quicker you can get back in your car and go home. So, you know, you can cut that shit down by about an hour or so and get home an hour early. That's probably a lot of what it is. But both of these were sleeper cabs. That's what, you know, they were honking out here earlier. You know, some of these drivers are just impatient no matter what they haul and who they haul for. It's just, it's, it's crazy sometimes. Places like this too, I mean, drivers love taking their 30 minute break. Even when there's plenty of spots around, drivers love taking their 30 minute break in the fuel line. And it pisses a lot of other drivers off. And it should with good reason, but... I 
there's a way to do it, and there's a way to do it right. I mean, you know. If you're gonna be a dickhead, be smart about being a dickhead. A lot of times what I'll do is if it's during the day like this, especially like first thing in the morning when it gets daylight, everybody wants to start get up and driving. Then you gotta realize that around noon, one o'clock, everybody wants to pull in somewhere to go get them something to eat. And by about, you know, You know, by about five, six, something like that, everybody's wanting to come in off the road and lay down and go to sleep. So those really aren't the times to be... to be screwing around. I'm going to save the game. Those aren't the times to really be dicking around. But if you have to dick around, and you know you're going to take your break, stopped running again. Like... Pull up behind somebody else that you kind of get the feeling that that's already taken their break, too. And I don't mean pull up behind somebody that's already pulled up away from the fuel line. I mean, pull up behind somebody who's either already in the fuel island or even sometime waiting to be you know waiting behind another truck it just depends I'll get behind a guy but I know it's gonna take a little while so I sit there and just wait wait for me to get done that can take you know 10 minutes 15 minutes Takes you about another, you know, 10 minutes to fuel, 7 to 10 minutes to fuel, depending on what and, you know, how shitty the pumps are and... Oh, shit. Oh, I want to go back this way first. Unless that was the only way to go. And then... When you get up to the pump, you, you, you take your time, too. You don't try to hurry up and pump real quick. You take your time. You walk around. You look like you're checking a tire. Maybe wash your windows. And then when you pull up and you go in to use the bathroom and you grab something to eat, by the time you get back to your truck then after that, 30 minutes should have passed. Or I've even been, you know, drive in. Go fuel, pull up, wait it out. If somebody comes in behind you and looks like they're ready to go, slowly and surely, go back around the fuel island. As long as you don't go over five miles an hour, you won't trip your fucking clock off. Circle back around the fuel island. A lot of times you gotta leave early too, you know. Hour at least an hour and a half early, an hour early to, you know, anticipate things like this. But the best time to do that shit's like, you know, one, two in the morning. So I drive at night, so I like driving at night. You can take a break in the fuel aisle when nobody's screwing with you, because there's only two other trucks there and like eight eight open pumps. You can take your break there, ain't nobody gonna say a damn thing to you. They can't say anything to you when you go tell oh, find a parking spot. It's one o'clock in the morning. There ain't no fucking parking spots. So I mean But you know, you also have to also have to take into an, into account where you're at, you know, what time of day it is. But 
I'll tell you, even like a small ass town, like for example, example, liberal Kansas, it's got that loves there. Liberal's not a big, t big town at all. It's very sparse, very spread out, but it's busy. That truck stop is busy, like kind of constantly. Why? Because there's a freaking cattle, a beef processing plant within sight of the truck stop. So you got people like me coming in there picking up product, and you also got the, the cattle trucks and everything bringing in, bringing in the livestock. And this plant just churns out beef 24-7. So, and, like, you know, I rag and bitch on dickhead drivers, and I will tell you that a lot of these damn, you know, livestock haulers are kind of dickheads, too. run you the hell over, they will honk at you while you're in the fuel line if you ain't going fast enough, and all this shit, but I mean, at least, like, they kind of have a logical reason, and that is, at least when you're full and you have the livestock on your trailer. You know, the livestock can only be in that trailer, but for so long. There's certain rules, there's certain, you know, regulations and everything that, you know, that, that, you know, that junk can only be in there, but for so long. So... Wait, there was a, there was a runaway and escape option? I did not even know there was an escape option. Chang done. Alright, that works. Oh, okay, there we go. There's that dragon fang war. Lucky, huh? Yeah, let's take it to the old man. Wait a second. Is some creature protecting this? It's starting to get now. You're screwing around their territory. No, oh, we're going in the hole. I mean, a lot of times they won't even, unless it's a specific check or whatever, a lot of times they won't even pull, they won't even pull livestock trailers into way stations. Because if they, especially, especially during the summer, well, even the, the, the dead middle of summer or the dead middle of winter. They know that they can't, hold up those cattle trucks but so long. Lest you have to open up the doors and let them out and let them roam around somewhere, you know, in a pen somewhere that they've made at the way station. They're gonna round them all back up in the truck and everything later, but... Yeah, especially in the hot-ass summer. That truck stops moving, that airflow stops moving. And with I don't know how many cows they could fit on them damn things, or even pigs, or whatever. I'm sure it gets hot quick. I'll tell you too, despite despite their best efforts. Like that. Despite their best efforts in trying to be careful. still some some animals that don't make it like they, 
don't make they don't make the trip. A lot of stress or you know trampled by the other animals or you know sometimes animals you know so animals just don't get along like people. Most people get along with people, but so, you know, sometimes two people get together and they just, for some reason, just do not get along. And it can happen with livestock and everything, too. So either by a heart attack or by something going on. If you open up the doors or whatever and there's a, a, a damn dead pig in there. Like they don't, they don't always make it. Like I said, this is despite the best efforts of the driver to... Like, they don't even... Damn. You can't even drive a cattle truck unless you have a, a manual transmission. Because they, they, they shift a lot smoother and you have a lot more control over your driving and everything. Because you can't be like... Just step, you know, like all these automatics. If you step on the gas and you get to going, and maybe say you're turning or you're going up a hill, sometimes these trucks will, will jerk. And yeah, you can't be knocking all the cows over and shit in the back of the truck. Falling all over one another or, you know. That was a waste. find himself a porking spot. The other problem, too, is I didn't see anywhere for a teleporter. Which means I'm going to have to crawl all the way back down this bitch in order to get down here until I... Maybe that floor down that uh, she didn't want to go down. Maybe that next one there is going to teleport her. Yeah, it looks like I'm going to be stuck here because that other, the other floor that other way did not have a... did not have a way out of it. That, um, I might have mentioned this in either when I was streaming, while I was in that hotel room, or maybe when I started this earlier, but, um, 
when everybody got crapped on a couple of weeks ago with this ice and snow, Texas down there, they had that like 130 car pile up, 130 vehicle pile up. And the one main video that come out of all that was after a lot of the cars had done piled up and this semi truck comes barreling in basically like a ramp off the back of another vehicle or two, pops up, lands back down on these two vehicles, two vehicles and almost goes over the, the jersey wall in the middle. And it was a FedEx driver. How, you, uh, how much you guys are aware of this or not. FedEx has the highest fatality rate of any fleet on the road, at least the last I heard. You know, more of their drivers, you know, per capita, per, you know, whatever. smell like wet shit in here. Not just the AC stuff, you know. It smells very, like, wet and musty. Oh, uh, fine, though. I noticed it's, uh, 10 o'clock, so it's 9 over there, and they still ain't called me. I'm just going to spend some time put out a few videos today. Even, uh, was it? Yeah, several years ago, there was that pileup in Wyoming on I-80. This is a year or two before I started driving. And some of the video, I mean, with a lot of others, too, but some, well, a lot of the video, the ones getting, you know, involved in going real fast and really screwing up other drivers, you know, FedEx. There's a UPS truck in there, too. But it's, yeah. It... Some of these guys just drive like absolute garbage. So, you did the summon creature. Does it mean you knew about that huge summon creature? Yep, that I did. I just wanted to train you. His way. I can trust you with this. What? Sword? You yank on it. <laughs> Western sword. I shall W Excalibur. She's part of the whole, you know. Yeah. I even think she's part of the whole uh, tournament thing, isn't she? Probably is, and I just don't know it. Yeah, 
time I hit that so I, I reached over that damn bird and hit that some bitch twice. <laughs> like damn. sword? Probably not, because it, it, I guess it technically ain't mine yet. Quick dagger, iron saber, novice knife. I'm supposed to give it to the old man first, so I guess technically I can't use it. Oh shit. As soon as I give the, the sword to the old man, I gotta get this one off and we'll do another one. We'll keep this going until whatever the hell they want to do. They will have enough backed up for more of this crazy shit. I knew they were gonna. Be. And he's gone. Hey, you old bastard. Supposed to be here when I'm looking for you. on the top level. company yet. That ain't the, the ringtone I set for them. Well, we have quiet down. Spacey. You don't ignore us? Alright, fine, I'll stick one in your book. I'll throw her into the bus, alright.
Fine. Screw it. Stuff that shit in there like socks and a socks and a duffel bag. Don't say her name, we shouldn't know yet. She must have a connection. Press one about that sword and get his advice. not, but I wonder if that ain't her dad and he just kind of hit away, but I, I don't know, I doubt it. It'd be too easy. Oh, there's Mama and Braun. Uh-huh. <laughs> he, he, say, he say beat some bastards off. <laughs> So it was probably her dad's sword. He's acting differently than usual. He probably got some poon is what he did. <laughs> he probably got himself some. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry about what? Sorry that bug up your ass had to die. <laughs> Keep going back there, though. And she always keeps going there.
through the course. Plus there's things young people can do that old people can't in the same way around, you know? Special ability, you know. It's <laughs> oh shit. Washed up at the docks. What the hell? Oh, okay. They're not gonna make us go directly over there. Which means I can leave this on a cliffhanger until next video. Probably ought to actually, yeah, pause the whole emulation. Which I don't know if that's going to work. It's going to add more time. So let me wrap this up and then get this one to upload. And the other one should be already uploaded, just scheduled. I keep talking to you guys like... Like, you're going to know when everything's happening as it's happening. And by the time I've done already posted this, it's done already happened. So. Oh, anyway. That wasn't too bad. Still no word of anything. I'm starting to get freaking hungry. I might do one more and then try to make something. All right. So, yep. Let me go ahead and get out of here and do a thing. And. Uh, she'll talk to y'all later. This has been Conspicuously Incredible Gaming with your host, Mike. If you like this content, give it a thumbs up, like, subscribe, share with your friends, do all the things. It really helps. Also, check out the links below for the places I stream at, the links below for the places that I'm archiving stuff up at. Streamlabs, if you'd like to donate a few dollars. If not, that's fine. Um... Also, the Discord. Join the Discord there. You'll know when I'm posting and you get to, you know, pat around with me and some of the other guys and everything when I'm on there. And, um, website. I, I gotta fix a lot of stuff. I'm still, I say it and it never happens. Which means a lot of these videos I'm gonna have to go back and, and readjust the, uh, the description too. But Anyway, that being said, thank you all for watching, take care, and have a good four. Conspicuously Incredible Gaming is a Conspicuously Incredible production. Conspicuouslyincredible.com